All right. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Frankie Slauson, and welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on KTQ. And uh, now that we are back on the air on 91.3 FM, I have with me a very special uh, interview today. If you guys uh, are, are big uh, movie nerds from way back in 1995 when there was a, a certain movie called Angus that uh, came out, or if you're uh, if you've uh, followed this guy's career uh, back in 2006 when he uh, was in uh, a movie called uh, Bachelor Party Vegas, or if you're lucky enough to even see it some of his stand-up, who am I talking about? The great Charlie Talbert. I have him on my uh, on the line right now, and uh, how's it going there, Charlie? Uh, I would I would go as far as to say the mediocre at best Charlie Talbert. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm doing great. How's the world? Oh, the world is uh, is a wonderful place still, even in today's world. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so how's it, how's it going overall, and uh, what have you been up to these days? <clears throat> well, like you said, I, I'm really I've I've been delving into uh, stand-up comedy. Um, I, I I was doing film and television up until about I would say oh eight, and then uh, I I kind of stood back and said, hey, I need to. Stop living like a twenty-year-old. I need to focus on getting married, so I can tell jokes later in the future. So I got married, got divorced, and now I'm telling jokes. And in fact, my my next performance will be at the comedy store, the world famous comedy store on Sunset on the twenty-second at seven thirty. Oh, jeez! Wow, that's a that's a pretty good story in, in a detailed, uh, quick uh, little response there. Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I suppose, you know, when you plan for stuff like that, whether it's marriage or, or trying to improve your life, you, you hope that everything just works just like it would be in a, in a storybook, kind of have a happy ending or a great beginning and a great ending, kind of. Yeah, it's true. You know, I when, when you spoke of Angus, and, and Angus, the kid gets the girl, you know, and he, he, he falls in love and everything is happy ever after. And in reality, I I got the girl, and then I, I divorced her. So it was it was, it was nice. It was, <laughs> it's still happy ever after. We're good friends, but uh, man, does it make for some funny. And mainly, it's on me. That really has nothing to do with her. It was just somebody calling me out every day on my my BS and what I was doing. Oh sure. Well, I suppose, and and maybe being single is probably the better route. I mean, I I'm a single guy too, and so I I've never been married. I don't have no kids, so I don't know. Maybe it's just a God's way of telling us uh, maybe it's best to be single for a while. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it's just God's way of saying, hey, you should go to shop a little more before you settle down at such a young age. <laughs> well, you, you and I are only about a five, we, about five years apart, uh, roughly, because I turned 30 uh, in 1980. Uh, or, uh, no, not 1983. I was born in 1983, so I turned 30 last September, and uh, you just t- recently turned 35. So we're, there's just a little bit of a five-year gap uh, between the two of us. And uh, uh, I... I uh, was kind of surprised that I didn't realize that you had a Facebook or whatnot until my a friend of mine, uh, Brendan Mitchell, who I talked to you about last night, who you uh, who you met and stuff. Uh, he uh, said you were doing some comedy, and I just like, wow! I was always kind of wondering what the heck happened to the guy, to the kid from Angus. I thought he just uh, was a one hit wonder and just kind of disappeared like a fart in the wind, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> and as I broke through the wind, I found stand up comedy. Yeah, man, I just uh, you know I. <clears throat> My divorce went through, and and uh, I woke up, and I used it only as a point of reference, not a not a point of suicidal tendencies. Or I just want you guys to know that I, I'm just really alone right now, and if somebody could just help, that would be good. No, um, <laughs> what happened was I just woke up one morning, and I, I had like this uh, five minute routine. I just spouted out of my head, and you know, I, I said to myself, I said, you know, you know what a beautiful moment is for a guy with a girl. It's, it's when you're sitting there in a restaurant, you know, and, and she's looking at you and you're looking at her and you're having that intimate moment, you know, and she's just right there, you know, like uh-huh. 10 or 15 tables away with another dude, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> so I figured, you know, that's, that's a beautiful relationship right there. And then I said, you know what else I'm in love with? It's my fridge. <laughs> I've never had something that's so easy to open, you know, that, that pleases me so much. And I don't get upset when other guys stick their meat in it. And it doesn't get mad at me for being inside of it for less than a minute or so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, uh, you know, I, I, I got a neighbor who lives across the way. He helped create Family Guy and uh, Call of Duty, and he's a writer and producer. And I just ran over there half naked, and I said, dude, you got to wake up. I've got some funny. Let's do this. And that was about seven months ago, and um, this next Friday will be my 
I think twenty second show. Oh wow! So it's just mm-hmm. it's, so it's just something that just uh, uh, started your your career. I mean, you know, or kind of restarted your career because uh, you know a lot of people probably. I mean, whether they know or they don't know that you were the kid in Ang- or that you were Angus, and you you know, I'm sure uh, you probably get sick and tired of hearing the the same old Angus. Uh, questions the same old Angus uh, references, but it, it kind of did uh, break you into the uh, the acting world more or less. And yeah, I never get tired of it. You know, it, it was um, TV helped me through some rough times in my young you know adulthood, and it really got me through. So to be a part of TV, just a medium, and being able to reach out and touch people's lives was uh, really quite amazing. In fact, my best friend in that movie, Chris Owen, uh, is actually still my best friend in real life, and. We've just finished like our 14th project together. I mean, we we try to keep each other going and uh, motivated. And the stand-up comedy actually just led to a new gig I'm working on. It's kind of like a G4 network kind of thing. It's called Umba TV, O O N B A, and it's like uh, gaming, but not only video gaming, but like life sports. You know, like speed golf or skydiving or even like Gen Con, which is going to be in Indianapolis. We're going to go check out and. They do like uh, large game, you know, gaming areas where you do role playing and things like that. Kind of the D and D heroes of the world. Is that is that something that you kind of enjoy? Like, are these things that you actually enjoy? Like uh, that you would do uh, even if you weren't get paid to do them? No, these are these are things that I kind of report on. You know, I'm kind of just part of that, letting uh, letting people into the world through Umba on uh, what they do. So it's kind of like you know, I, I shoot probably. 10 episodes a week and it takes me about five minutes an episode and I just kind of go through and sometimes we'll go out to places and, and visit the actual event and uh, do interviews and things like that and just kind of really get people involved and uh, the stand-up kind of helped me break back into that world. So uh, let's kind of go back into the beginning of your, you know, like kind of when you were a little kid and stuff and, and how, how how did you get into the uh, the acting bug? <clears throat> I, um, I basically... Uh, I was a poor black kid from Kenosha, Wisconsin, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I was out on the streets, and, uh, oh, no, wait, no, that's not my story. Um, yeah, yeah, as what did I, I do? So oh, like yeah, you. yeah, I was a fat kid who uh, was, <laughs> I was into cycling um, uh, through my, my boss, who was a really great guy, Tony Ruffalo, and he, he would take me down to Northbrook, Illinois, and we were, we were heading back up. Um, we stopped at the Wendy's that hangs over the freeway there with the 31 Flavors, yeah. uh, just north of Northbrook. I think it was Lake Forest, yeah. And then uh, I was just telling a joke one night. It was like midnight, and uh, everybody started laughing and going crazy. And uh, this guy comes up to me. His, his name was Patrick Reed Johnson. He had directed the movie Space Invaders. And uh, he comes up to me and he says, Hey, I'd just like to be in a movie. And I said, Hey, are you hitting on me? <laughs> and he goes, Why would you say that? I said, Well, I'm, a, I'm an overweight kid. I have boobs, and I'm wearing spandex, and it's near Chicago. And you want to make a movie at 12 o'clock at night. So, you know, I got questions. <laughs> and uh, so, he, <laughs> so he said, no, 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 this is me, you know. And I was like, oh, my God, I know that movie. And so he pulls out his wallet, and I saw all the cash and the platinum cards and stuff. I was like, ooh, this guy means something. <laughs> so um, I went home, and I, I told my mom that night. It's about 1230, I got home. And I said, Mom, I might be in a movie. And she says, Charlie, go to bed. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. So, you know, and then I I came back down. They told me to come down the following Friday, and I, I met with Jane Alderman, who cast Rudy and the director. And I was in a room with a, a bunch of people. Apparently, they'd been looking for this kid for three years, and and uh, a lot of a lot of young actors, Ethan Suplee, Michael Ray Barrow, all these kids were up for it at the time. And uh, I went in, and they were like, okay, read your audition piece. And I'm like, what's an audition piece? <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're the kid we discovered. So they, they sent me home with some notes. They had me do some improv, just goofing around with them. And I came back a few days later, and the rest is quasi-history. They, they sent me out to um, they sent me out to L.A., and I, I met Chris. And they, they locked us in a room together and filmed us without us knowing it, which I'm pretty sure is illegal in some states. Um, <laughs> yeah. But we, we got along. We were finish each, finishing each other's jokes. And they said, hey, we want to we wanna send you guys to Disneyland and give you $200 a piece and see if you guys get along. And I looked at them and I said, who the hell is not going to get along in the happiest place on earth with $200 in their pocket? <laughs> so, especially, yeah, we got the part. Especially $200 uh, in uh, 1990s money. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> we're talking, we're talking Chris Cross will make you jump. Yeah. Jump. 
<laughs> but you know what I what I found really interesting about the movie Angus, and it's been a it's been a while since I've seen it, but I have seen it. Uh, I realized that they just uh, put it on DVD not too long ago. So the last time I saw it was uh, on videotape. So it's been a while. That's right. But uh, That's right. in fact, this was one of the last movies I ever owned on videotape. Oh jeez. But uh, what I find kind of ironic about that is that some of the parts uh, were filmed in Minnesota, and I'm originally from uh, northern Minnesota. So uh, I, uh, any movie that's been filmed in Minnesota that uh, is got well known or or just got a little publicity, I think it's kind of kind of neat just because of the, the Minnesota feel to it. Well, that was a very interesting movie. Like the movie itself, when we first read it, it was completely different. <clears throat> Chris Crutcher's version, uh, he wrote the short story. They're actually, they've been joking around about doing a sequel, which is pretty funny. But uh, they, the original story had two fathers that were gay. And uh, Larry Drake, and I believe his name is uh, Robert Chaz, I can't remember his last name. Um, they were the gay fathers in the movie. And Larry Drake was Dr. Hughes. I don't know if you remember that. Um, oh, wow. But he played my father, and he divorced my mom and it was like the full separation and we had people where we were shooting in Owatonna they were cocktail bombing the set um, because they didn't want uh, essentially gay people in the story oh yeah so they kind of bossed the original whole plan for for Angus and it, it turned out to just be you know one of those you know teen movies that really help people with weight problem or differences get through their lives and that's kind of really what for me, it was all about was I got to go back to school and say, "See, see, anybody can do it." <laughs> and, and I think even if if that movie would have came out like now, I think it would have really helped on the whole bullying thing because it seemed like a, a lot of the story between you and uh, James Vanderbeek at the time, well, in the movie anyway, for the characters that uh, you guys got a lot of fights. You know, he definitely picked on you a lot. <laughs> well, you know, James. Uh, as far as I had heard, James Vanderbeek uh, didn't really talk about the movie Angus a lot because of the bullying scenario. So he didn't really, I, I just recently saw an interview with him and Eric Andre, a comedian, um, where he actually talked about the movie for the first time in a long time. And it was mainly because, you know, he was not a positive character in that film. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but I told him, you know, not a lot of people worried about it since Babe came out the same weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody wants to watch Babe and said. But, you know, I think it's kind of neat. I mean, uh, for a movie that uh, is it's definitely a well-known, you know, teen movie. And, uh, I mean, they got so many nowadays. What do you think of the teen movies now compared to back in the 90s or even in the 80s? Well, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time watching teen movies. Okay. Um you know, by law, I'm not allowed to, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, <laughs> no, uh, I don't watch a lot of teen movies. I've seen a few here and there, but their teen movies are more in accordance now to, like, what American Pie would be. Uh -huh. um, you know, some, they're, they're, they're shooting for that next great, you know, teen sex comedy. And even the awkward dramas like Diary of a Wimpy Kid, that's more towards the Angus venue and that's pretty good like I, you know I, w I was comfortable with that series of movies and things like that I think uh, I think it'd be kind of cool if you got like a, a guest appearance and there's a show out there on CBS that I'm a big fan of just became a fan of it you know within the last year uh, watch just about every episode up to their current episode right now uh, Mike and Molly is a great show based on uh, fat people that you know they're not really the target of, of jokes even though they kind of are but the two actors playing them are so hilarious, and I think how cool it would be for you to to have a guest uh, appearance in a in a show like that. <laughs> well, you know, when that good piece comes along, I'll, I'll definitely go for it. I, I, you know, my manager keeps an eye out on uh, breakdowns and stuff like that. That's one of those shows that I like to get hooked up with. You know, they've already got a good looking big guy and a good looking big gal on there, and I just don't want to hurt their chances of losing <laughs> ratings because I leave the show. You know, are you are you pretty familiar with the show though overall? Do you watch uh, it? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've seen a few of the episodes, and uh, I just uh, recently had met the, the lead gal. She's funny as heck. I I remember auditioning for Go back in the day, and that was one of her first, first jobs. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's she's the one that knows that the two are. You know, having an affair, and she's like, "Did you know you guys missed each other by a minute?" But I always <laughs> found her adorable, and I'm really glad she's taken off. Yeah, and, and, and that's that just uh, the thing about it. it's like you never know where where fame's going to get you. Uh, eventually, uh, many years later, you came back into the spotlight. I mean, I don't know all the stuff that you've done. I just know some of the key things. Uh, I have never seen Bachelor Party Vegas, but I know that you mm -hmm. were, you worked with uh, Cal Penn from uh, Harold and Kumar. So, what was that like? For well, you? 
<clears throat> Cal and I knew each other. I worked on, uh, I was in Van Wilder as well. Um, and, uh, so was my buddy Chris and, and, uh, Chris Owen and Cal recognized me, uh, when I came into the audition room for Bachelor Party Vegas, which was originally called, um, Vegas Baby. And, uh, it was really neat because, you know, we connected right away and we had a good bond and we had a good time when we were shooting. And, you know, Donald Faison uh, was in that flick as well from Scrubs. And, you know, he and I had kind of wacky, goofy personalities. And it, it was really kind of a, a fun and uplifting show to do. And that was a period where I remember that was like one of seven films that I did that year. And I was just like exhausted. I was like, all right, let's do it anyway. So let's make it happen. And it was really neat to do. And what other uh, films have you done? Uh, any other big, big notable roles, or just uh, more independent stuff? Uh, I've done a lot of it independent. Like I did, um, gosh, I did uh, a movie called Twenty Years After the Fall, um, which is picking up a lot of trash. And it's about the uh, first baby born after the apocalypse. Sure. Um, I've done. I, I wish I could. I wish I had my resume in front of me. Sure. Um, but I've done a lot of like Kickstarter stuff to get people going uh, and get them started in film, and you know show my enthusiasm but i did a movie called who's your daddy um which was out i think that we shot that right before that film um that's why we, yeah exactly we were working on van wilder at the same time we we're working on who's your daddy in fact in van wilder you'll see i'm wearing a who's your daddy shirt oh, okay. but uh, yeah qu quite a few films uh, i've done about since since i've been in the industry i've done about 34 films and about 20 television shows and the last thing that i worked on was uh, actually up until I, you know, released myself from acting for a while, I did the Charlie Talbert show, which was basically like YouTube in my brain oh, yes. um, for CBS Mobile. I, I actually saw that, I uh, saw your YouTube channel last night, actually, and watched uh, a couple of the videos that you did, a couple of the short videos, anyway. And, uh, you know, I gotta say, I mean, it's just kind of kind of neat. I mean, uh, 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 did, did you always think that you're going to be a part of the entertainment industry one way or another, or did you ever think of doing something like a normal 9-to-5 job? Well, I actually do a normal 9-to-5 job. I manage uh, Joseph A. Bank Clothier in Glendale, California. Okay. And I do, uh, I'm a loss prevention captain where, you know, sometimes we'll visit stores and try to help people keep on track on, as far as what they're doing. And I've done suits on and off now. Uh, for 16 years. So when I wasn't working as an actor, I was selling suits or working with clothes. Uh, I'm kind of a clothes horse when it comes to uh, suits and things like that. And the the reason I like doing suits is the exact same reason I like doing film and television is because you get to be part of some of the biggest moments in people's lives and help them through things and help them get that job or, you know, give them that positive influence, which helped me you know, get out here and do what I wanted to do, and now it's got me back on stage on Sunset, you know? So what are your uh, what are your goals uh, as far as the entertainment industry goes, like in the next few years? Well, right now, uh, right now the stand-up, I, I kind of have a, a TV show in mind that uh, I've been working with uh, Kevin, you know, talking to Kevin Farley about uh, I want to do a show with him. Um, Kevin and I worked together years ago on a show, uh, and his brother was there, uh, Chris, I had a, a very, very great week with, uh, great weekend with Chris Farley, oh, um, <laughs> which was nice. And it was about a about a month before he passed away. And uh, Kevin, Kevin and I have always talked and remained close. Uh, you know, so it's it's him and John. We've always been good buds. So you know, he's doing the stand up thing, and I've been trying to be good enough so I can go up there and hang out with him and uh, pitch this show idea with him and kind of make it work and. We'll see what happens. The producer that I told you about, Dan Smith, is the guy who wants to put all that together. And I think it's just kind of interesting because the fact that you and, and uh, Chris Farley and Kevin Farley and the whole Farley family is from Wisconsin. So, I mean, you got you got, you got that kind of connection, you know? Yeah, that's definitely where some of that bond comes in. And the fact that we're all goofy as shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, I mean, sometimes you got to be. And, but I think that's... I think that's kind of neat. Were you ever inspired, like, uh, by like uh, uh, S SNL or even uh, SCTV in, in some of your inspiration? No, well, more so SCTV than SNL. I, I've always had an admiration for you know uh, Bill Murray. You know, I'm a chiver. Keep calm and chive on. Um, I, I I was very pleased to have had time to uh, meet Harold Ramis before oh, yes. he passed away. Um, which was neat. Uh, I, I've worked with uh, Dave Thomas from SCTV, 
Um, I've met in, uh, John, John Levy and, uh, oh, sorry, Eugene Levy and, uh, what, what I think is, uh, Martin Fire. Short. So I, I've met a lot of those guests and I've worked with a bunch of people that were in that era. Like I worked with, uh, William Atherton, who you may know as the environmentalist, uh, from, uh, environmentalist from Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was in Who's Your Daddy with us, and he was Gilda Radner's older maid. I, I've always found a, a good tie to that because growing up, I would watch a lot of SCTV, and and I got a lot of compliments. You know, uh, Dave Thomas and Eugene and Levy both said to me once that I reminded them of uh, John Candy, oh, sure. and that was probably one of the best compliments I've ever received. Oh yeah, and, and definitely. I mean, if if you and John Candy and Chris Farley ever were done a movie together, oh boy, I can only imagine <laughs> what that would that would, probably would have been a blockbuster. I'm pretty sure. Just I kind of I kind of picture them as you know there's there, you can either go the John Candy route or you can go the Chris Farley route, and the Chris Farley route are big actors that make fun of the fact that they're big, uh-huh. or the John Candy route where you just happen to be big and you're an actor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a little combo of the two. I remember uh, when you mentioned about William Atherton. Uh, I remember uh, he also did a movie called uh, Real Genius with uh, Val Kilmer. That was a pretty. You know, I've movie. actually, I've actually, uh, that that was one of my checklists in life. Actually, uh, Gabriel played uh, Mitch in Real Genius. I had a chance to hang out with him um, at a bar down in Santa Monica one evening, and I told him, I said, you know, I've worked with Val Kilmer, I've worked with William Atherton, and I've worked with John Kreese, uh who he and I did a movie called um, what is it, uh, Waterborne, and uh, I was like, I pretty much got most of all the cast of that movie now that I've worked with. Oh, that's, and that's, you know, and that's just something that you can, you know, as you get older in life, you know, you can always look back and say, you know, I did this, I did that, I got to work with this person, I got to work with that person. That's kind of how I feel about my interviews. Uh, when we get done with this interview, I'll, I'll send you the link uh, via Facebook to, to my YouTube page uh, because I got lots of stuff that I've, a lot of other big name people other than yourself that I've uh, interviewed throughout the course of the last, well, since 2006 anyway. And it's just uh, it's just kind of interesting, I guess. You know, when you when you put it all together, of you know, you never know what life's gonna, what road life's going to take you. If you would have went a different direction and said, "I'm just going to stay in Wisconsin and be a farmer," uh, or, or just anything else, you know, or just be a regular person, you know, like now, uh, who knows where your life would have been, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, one of the most memorable nights I've ever had in my life comes from doing film, and it's it's. It's in my, 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 I was shooting a film in, uh, actually in Minot, North Dakota. Sure. And I had to leave Minot, uh, and, uh, go to LA. And my grandma just had a heart attack. And I was like, I'm going to go back and see grandma, see how she's doing. She recovered, you know. And she's like, no, no, you go film. So the next day, I get, I get to LA, and I'm supposed to shoot this other movie called Wishcraft. And, uh, <laughs> I get there on the way to getting a full fake body cast of myself made for this movie because it was a horror flick with meatloaf. Um, <laughs> our car gets shot at because there's some gang war or something going on at the time. And uh, the bullets hit the car and we didn't get hurt, thank God, me and the driver. And then that night I was so shaken up, my buddy Chris said, hey, you need to come out to this party with me. That night, we showed up to the party. It was the this is how long ago this was. It was the Britney Spears in sync lap party. Oh jeez! And, and we wow. go to this party at Los Palmas, and I see Britney standing alone, and all my friends are there. And I go, "You guys dare me to ask her to dance?" And they're like, "Do it!" <laughs> so I go up and I go, "Hi, I'm I'm Charlie," and she goes, "I'm Britney," and I'm thinking, "No kidding!" <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I said, "You know, would you like to dance?" And she goes, "Do you know how?" I said, "No, but for you, I'll fake it." <laughs> So I dance with her, I go outside, I feel all great about that, and then Alan Cummings comes up to me, and you might remember him from the Bond films, he works a lot oh, with yeah. Parker Posey, and he says, hey, um, I know what you're doing, but my friend over there thinks you're really hot and would like to hang out with you. And I said, what friend? And I look over, and it's Parker Posey. Oh, jeez. And I'm like, this is probably the happiest moment of my life. You can take me now, God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I ended up working with her on Spring Breakdown, uh, actually in '08, and uh, it was really, it was really kind of neat. See, you just never know. Life is so incredible that way. <laughs> I know, small world. You, you never know from you know being the big kid everybody picked on to being the big kid who's dancing with Britney Spears and having Parker Posey saying you're hot. You feel good. You feel good about it. 
So before I before I let you go after doing this interview, and I want to say thank you first of all for uh, uh, let me uh, have the time and uh, you taking the time for uh, me to to talk to you for a little bit. Uh, the last question, I, yeah, no no problem. The last question is, uh, what advice would you have for somebody who wants to be an actor, and uh, what type of uh, good advice would you give that person? Okay, here's my shameless plug. <laughs> uh, you check out my Facebook uh, page, uh, Charlie Talbert Comedian. And if you have questions like that, go ahead and inbox me and say, hey, I don't know what to do. There's different stages for people that want to be an actor. You know, there's people that come out and they're like, I want to be an actor. First, I've got to get my headshots. It's not about getting your headshots. Never have to pay for your agent manager. Just go out there with all your heart. Be fun. And every room you're in, be infectious, not obnoxious. Um, It'll be, you know, your ticket to what you want to do. Yeah, Awesome. All right, well, thanks, Charlie, and uh, uh, once again, this is an interview with Charlie Talbert. Uh, if you don't know this guy by now, well, what the heck have you been doing? You should have been listening to the interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much, uh, Charlie. I, I definitely appreciate uh, you uh, just taking the time to let me do this with you. Well, it's such a pleasure, absolutely. Thanks for having me, gang. Hey, no problem. Uh, you take care, and we'll hopefully talk to you again in the future. <laughs> you got it, bud. Thanks All so right, much. bye. And that was Mr. Charlie Talbert, uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed the this interview uh, with him. And uh, it was a lot of fun to be able to uh, to do stuff like this. This is my fourth interview this year in 2014. Uh, it's not the only four interviews I've ever done, but if you want to go check out, take a look at this interview as well as all the other interviews I, I have done so far, uh, there's a lot of them. There's al- almost it's pretty much over a hundred of them. I'll just tell you. Even though there might it might say ninety one videos, but there's actually over well over a hundred that I have done. Uh, please uh, take a look at YouTube dot com slash Frankie Slauson Show F R A N K Y S L A W S O N S H O W and uh, yes YouTube dot com slash Frankie Slauson Show and uh, always updating the interview series. There's still more interviews I'm going to be doing throughout the year. I might even, this summer, might even bring back my Icons of Pop Culture series that uh, was a popular favorite last summer when I did that back in my hometown of Greenbush. So uh, now that I'm in Rapid City, uh, hey, you never know, the sky's the limit. We'll be right back with some more great music and more of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on KTech on 91.3 FM. We are live on the air on both the internet and the actual airwaves. Be right back. <laughs> 